we do that because to get to the truth of such a person like Bach is a complicated task, and it requires more care than, than the way that people usually go into it. And we find, through that greater care, a truth that is often much more beautiful than what people have told us, or especially information that's readily floating around on the internet. So the false piece of Bach information that I am taking down in this episode, it's a video called J.S. Bach's Crab Cannon on a Mobius Strip. Now, what is a crab cannon? What is a Mobius Strip? Let's get right into it. I am now playing Bach's Crab Cannon from left to right on the page. You'll forgive me for sort of playing this metronomically and not beautifully because I need to line this up with the same recording going from right to left. Once I finish this here, I'm going to reverse it. Reverse that recording and put it with itself and you will see that it's almost like me speaking and then reversing what I just spoke and playing it at the same time which I could try right now. I'll, I'll try the sentence, the quick brown fox jumps over the lazy dog. Here it is, two at once. The quick uh, brown the fox the jumps so over the lazy right. dog. Right, so that sounds like complete nonsense, complete dissonance, because it is indeed me speaking backward and forward. But when you do that with music, so if I do that with the same big long line that I played just now, and we reverse it at the same time, then we get a crab cannon. Crab, because it's walking from left to right and right to left. Here is the crab cannon solved, as we say. always fascinated by that piece just stunned every time i hear it it's got to be one of the finest examples of music that you could read in two directions at the same time ever written okay now what is a mobius strip why this piece of music on a mobius strip i was always annoyed with this video frankly because i just didn't get it you know i understand bach but i don't understand this video so what was going on so why what is a mobius strip let's make one you take a strip of paper or your belt or whatnot, a strip of something, and instead of just connecting it into a loop, you put one half twist in it, not a full twist, a half twist, and you connect it. There, you've made a Mobius strip. Why is that interesting? Well, if you run your finger around a ring, for example, around your belt or around just a piece of paper without a twist in it, you're touching one side of the ring. And your strip, as you know, has two sides. You've got the outside of the ring and the inside. But when you put a half twist in it, why? Now try running your finger around that. Your finger goes around both sides of the belt, both sides of the strip. You hit every inch of the strip. So now let's put a piece of writing on this half-twisted belt, which we're calling a Mobius strip. I want, you to I want you to do this. I want you to take a strip of paper with a half-twist in it, tape it, and then start writing somewhere on the piece of paper. And you'll find that after a while, you've written on the entire strip of paper. You eventually, without turning the strip, have written on every side of the strip. So why then is our crab cannon, we're back to the crab cannon, why is the crab cannon not a true Mobius strip? Well, let's go back to the piece of paper we wrote on and untape it. If we untape it, we see that the writing on one side of the strip is upside down. But you didn't write it upside down. You remember that? You just wrote in one direction and found that you had covered all the strip. It's that that is the special property of the Mobius strip. Something traveling along a Mobius strip returns to its starting position inverted. So if you leave your house on a Mobius strip and you walk around the world on a Mobius strip, you come back home upside down. Going back to the idea of a belt without the twist in it, in other words, a loop, well, that's what it's called. It's called the loop machine. If we send our musical idea in a loop machine, we get the same thing every time. That's why it's a loop machine. But if we feed our idea into a Mobius strip machine, we feed it a scale, we get inverted scale. And then we refeed it inverted scale, and we get a scale. So what happens is when we feed our Mobius strip machine, our crab cannon, well, we get the inverted crab cannon. And this is why it doesn't work with the crab cannon 
because there's no inversion in the crab canon. The crab canon is just something that can be read backward and forward. It has actually nothing to do with inversion. If you put the crab canon into the Mobius strip, the Mobius strip would give you the crab canon upside down. This is what the crab canon would sound like on a Mobius strip. It sounds like what I've already played. This is the correct way to solve the crab canon. But then as we get to the halfway point here, you're going to hear what it sounds like inverted. Ready, and it's here. That's not what you hear in the video. That is actually what the crab cannon would sound like on a Mobius strip. So why am I annoyed or upset? So what? Someone made a video that puts forward an incorrect notion about Bach. There are loads of those. Everywhere you turn, all kinds of those videos. Nearly four million people saw this video. Uh, so what? What can you do? What annoys me is that Bach actually did write music that fits on a Mobius strip, but it's not this canon. But there are other canons from this same collection which do fit the Mobius properties. And it's this very long introduction that brings us back to those canons which we've now spent two episodes on. And within them, there are many of those...